Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to take a look at array properties and methods. Uh, we're going to go over each one of these and explain exactly what each one of them does. Also look at a few examples and also go over a few common problems that you may run into with each one of these. Um, we're going to go over, you know, some of them may, may seem pretty basic like length and index of and then we'll get down here to the harder stuff like um, uh, reduce and map and things like that. Um, uh, one thing before I get started, if we go over here to the Mozilla Developer Network, to the Array documentation, pretty much everything I'm going to show you, you can find here uh, in the documentation, and they also have some great examples over here. Um, but you know, some people learn this stuff better visually, so I thought it was something that would make a good video. Um, one more little side note here, um, the methods that we're going to take a look at, if you see some of these have this little beaker icon to the side of it, uh, these are experimental and we're not going to go over those in this video, but I will make a video uh, for those in the near future. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. The first method we're going to take a look at is one called isArray. And just like it sounds, it's a method that takes in a variable and returns a true or false as to whether or not that variable is an array. Um, so I have uh, three values here. I have a string, an object, and an array. So if I run each one of these through this method, and that is array dot is array, and go ahead and grab this variable here, and then let me copy and paste this line for each one of these, and then paste in each one of these variables. And this code that I'm going to uncomment out right here, don't worry about this, it's just some code that uh, displays this down here into the HTML so that you can uh, see the results a little bit better. Um, so as we can see here, uh, the string variable that we passed through, uh, is array function returned false, the object also returned false, and the array returned true. Um, so, you know, no surprises there, pretty much what we expected. Next up, let's take a look at the length property. You all have most likely seen the length property before. Um, what it does is it uh, looks at the length, the total length of the array. So right here we have a test array that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so 10 total. Um, so if we do array len equals array2 dot length, and then we output that to the HTML, then we can see that that length that we get is 10. Where you usually see something like this is in uh, a for loop. So if I uncomment out this for loop here, um, this is a for, lo that, a for loop that uh, calculates the sum total of all the numbers in this array. Um, so you can see here it is uh, for var i equal to zero less than array two dot length. So um, once I hits the point to where it is equal to the array two dot length, then it breaks out of the for loop. And you can see here when it runs through that, uh, we get the sum total is 45. So that is the array length property. Um, so next, let's take a look at the index of method. The index of method uh, takes an element and checks whether or not it is in the array and if it is in the array, it returns the number of uh, the index. Um, so here I have a sample array that is just uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Um, here I have a variable called index of 3. If I wanted to see uh, what index 3 was in in that array, I could do array 3, 1, dot index of 3. And now if I uncomment out this line to display it to the HTML, then we can see, see that the index of three is two. And if we look up at our array, zero, one, two. You can also pass in a second parameter into index of that specifies the starting position. Um, so for example, if I was to put in a two here and start at position two, then it still finds index or the, it still finds three at index two uh, right at the starting point. But if I was to do the starting point at index position three, then you can see now down here in the HTML, it returns uh, five for the position that it found three uh, because 
we started at zero, one, two, three. We started here, and so it didn't equal three here, then moved on to four, then moved on to position five, and then returned five. There is also a last index of method. If I copy this up here and paste it in, and let me get rid of this starting position. Uh, what last index of does is it ser instead of searching from left to right, it searches from right to left. Um, so last index of three in this situation uh, gives us eight. Uh, that's because it's starting here at the last element and finds three right off the bat, uh, which is the eighth index in this array. And you can do starting positions with these as well. If I put in a six here and save that, then now it gives me the index of three is five because I started at index six, which is this one value here, and then it searches from right to left and finds three at the fifth position in the array. And these don't only work with numbers here. Um, that's just uh, an easy example. Uh, if I come down here and uncomment, out, com uncomment this code here, um, I have an array of uh, strings of names and at this line here, I'm searching for an index of Rob, and you can see that it's 0, 1, and if I look down here at the HTML, index of Rob returns a 1. If I was to do a last index of for Rob, then you can see it now returns a 3 because it's searching from right to left, and there is a, another Rob string in here. Um, now, if you search for an element that doesn't exist, um, you see here I'm searching for index of Joey, and if I take a look at my list of names here, there isn't one that exists. And in that case, index of uh, returns a negative one. Index of and last index of both turn negative one if it searches the array and doesn't find the element. So that is the index of method for the array. Let's move down here and take a look at push and pop. Push and pop are ways to add and remove elements from your array. Um, so you can see here I have a sample array that is just simply um, three numbers, one, two, three. And to push a value on, I can do array4.push and I will just push on the string one and then let me output this to the HTML. And you can see here that um, this value got pushed onto the end of the array. So it's one, two, three, and then the string one. Um, so now let me go ahead and push on another value. And I'll just push on the string two. And then let me output this to the HTML. And you can see that this got added onto the array too. So uh, one, two, three, and then the strings one, two. Now what pop does is it, it pops that element off of the end of the array. Um, and it doesn't take any parameters. So if I just run array four dot pop, and then semicolon, and then let me output that. Then you can see it pop that uh, two string off of the end. And if I run array4.pop one more time, then we should get back to our original array of one, two, three. Um, and if you look down here, um, it popped off that string one, and now we have one, two, three. Um, so you can see here, I started off by pushing on the string one, pushing on the string two, and then popping off two, and then popping off one. Um, so basically that's how push and pop work. Um, so now we can look at something very similar to push and pop and that is shift and unshift. Now shift and unshift are pretty much like push and pop except instead of adding and removing elements from the end of the array, uh, you add and remove elements to the beginning of the array. Uh, so here I have the, uh, the same test array that I had before of one, two, three. And if I do that array and unshift is what I use to add elements on. And I'll just do the same one. I'll do one, the string one. And then let me output that to the, to the screen. And you can see down here that whenever I unshifted one, it added it 
to the beginning of the array. Um, so now let me go ahead and unshift the string to and save that. And let me output that to the screen. And now you can see when I unshifted two, uh, it added it to the beginning of the array here. Array here. So now I have two, one, and then one, two, three, which was my original array. Um, so now, just like pop, if I run shift, then it will remove that element from the front of the array. So I can do array five dot shift, and then if I output my array to the screen then you can see I shifted and that two got removed from the front of the array. And now if I run shift one more time, then we should get the original array that we started with. So shift, and then let me output that array to the screen. And now shift one, two, three, we have the array that we started with. So here I unshifted one and it added it to the beginning. Then I unshifted two and it added it to the beginning. Then I ran shift, which shifted this two off of the front. And then I ran shift again, which shifted one off the front, which left us with our original array of one, two, three. So that is shift and unshift. Um, so now we can take a look at the two string method.